Yo, what's up guys? This is my brand new and refurbished 1 to 99 crafting guide for 2017. In this guide, like all my other 1 to 99 guides, I'm going to show you the best ways to get 99 crafting. So let's begin with some useful items and there's only a few for crafting. So this one is the Artisan's outfit and this can be one from Treasure Hunter. There are 5 pieces in this set and each piece gives you a 1% XP boost. However if you have the full set then you'll get a 6% XP boost instead of a 5% XP boost. So if you've been lucky to get any of the pieces from Treasure Hunter then make sure you're wearing them when you're training up your crafting. Next up we have a portable crafter and this gives you a 10% XP boost, a 10% chance to save hides and clay and a 5% chance to save a gem when you're cutting them. Now you don't have to buy your own portables, you can just go to the friends chat portables, ask in there where the portable crafter is and then they'll point you in the right direction. Now you can't use the portable crafter with every single method that I'm going to be showing you, however when you get to those methods that you can use the portable crafter with I'll let you know. The last of the useful items is the scroll of dexterity and what this does is it gives you a chance of retaining an ingredient when using three or more of the same ingredient when crafting. That chance changes for each of the leathers as you can see below. For the green dragon leather it's 25%, blue is 20, red is 15, black is 10 and then royal is 5. You need 60 crafting and 60 dungeoneering in order to use this and when you have that you can buy it for 20,000 dungeoneering tokens. In my opinion this is like really worth it if you're going to go for 99 crafting or like a high crafting level then definitely get this because it will save you a lot of money. Especially if you're going to be using the dragon leathers because you know you might as well. There's just no real reason not to unless you're a low dungeoneering level and you can't be bothered to do some dungeoneering. But at the end of the day it is up to you so you can do whatever you like. Now that we're done with the useful items, it's time to get into the actual training. So from 1 to 22, you should be making bowstrings. In order to make bowstrings, you need flax, and every time you make one of these, you will get 15 XP. And in order to get from 1 to 22, you have to make 375 of them. In order to make the bowstrings, just fill up your inventory with flax, and then come to the first floor of the Lumbridge Castle, and come to this room here. In this room is a spinning wheel, and you can just use this to spin your flax into bowstrings. And this is pretty decently AFK, I mean as you can see at the top, it started with 50 seconds in order to do the whole inventory. So with those 50 seconds, you can just do whatever the hell you want, you can just AFK, or just concentrate on something else. And on top of it being pretty AFK, this is going to make you money as well. Especially since double XP is coming up, people are going to be buying bowstrings in order to train up their fletching. So the price of those is probably going to rise a bit so obviously this means that there's more money for you but anyway once you spin your whole inventory of flax just head upstairs and there's a bank right up there once you hit 22 crafting you should make sapphire necklaces up to level 34 the items required in order to do this is a gold bar and a necklace mold and you can just put the necklace mold on your tool belt it's not like you have to have it in your inventory or something just add it to your tool belt and then you'll be able to use it all the time and on top of those two things you're also going to need a sapphire Every time you make one of these you will get 55 XP and you need to make 266 of them in order to reach level 24. In order to make these you want to make a bank preset and you want to have 14 gold bars and 14 sapphires in your inventory. Just make a bank preset like I just did on screen. And then what you want to do is you want to go to the French chat portables and then find a portable forge. Not a portable crafter because you can't use the portable crafter with what we're going to be doing now. It has to be a portable forge. And then just click on the portable forge whenever you're ready. Make sure it's selected on sapphire necklaces and then make them. And then when you have to bank again just go to the bank, load up your preset and then do it all over again. Now if you don't want to use a portable forge then that's fine. Just go to the furnace in Edgeville you'll get a little less XP per hour but I mean it's up to you on what you want to do especially if you can't be bothered to like find a portable forge in the French Trap portables. Making these sapphire necklaces will currently make you around 400 profit for each one that you make. Just bear in mind that the prices can change so if you're watching this a while after it's been uploaded just make sure to check for yourself on the Grand Exchange that these are still profitable. Also one more thing to note if you do use a portable forge you'll not gain any of the benefits that it provides. The only benefit that you'll get from it is that you will not have to run back and forth from the furnace. Furnace. Moving on, from 34 to 56, you want to make ruby rings. In order to make ruby rings, you need a gold bar and a ring mold. Like I said before, just add the ring mold to your tool belt, and you also need a cut ruby as well. Every time you do this, you'll gain 70 XP, and you need to make 2,341 in order to get to 56. Now this one is done exactly the same as the sapphire necklaces, just make sure you make a bank preset, and then once again it's up to you whether or not you use a portable forge or not, or you can just go to Edgeville like I said earlier. And every time you make one of these ruby rings, you'll make around 220 profit off of each of them. Once you hit level 56, you should be doing diamond necklaces all the way up to level 63. Now this is the last of the jewelry for our training methods and in order to make this you need a gold bar and a necklace mold. Like I said before, just add it to your tool belt and you also need a diamond as well. Every time you make one of these you'll gain 90 XP and you need to make 2051 in order to get all the way up to level 63. Once again this works exactly the same as the last time, just make sure you make a preset before you start 
and then either use a portable forge or the furnace in Edgeville in order to make them. And once again, you'll also be making a profit off of these diamond necklaces. Every time you make one, you'll make around 330 GP profit. With that being said, we're now done with the profitable methods, it's time to get to see what actually makes crafting an expensive skill. So from 63 to 84, you want to be making green dragon hide bodies. In order to make these, you need thread and three green dragon leathers for each body that you make. Every time you make one of these, you'll gain 186 XP or 204.6 if you're making them on a portable crafter. In order to get from 63 to 84, you need to make 13,885 of them. And if you're using a portable crafter, that goes down to 12,624. So it's a good 1.2k difference there. Now before I show you how to do it, I was debating whether or not to put this or green dragon hide shields here. The reason why I was considering the shields as well is because you lose more or less the same amount of GP than if you were to make the bodies, and you also gain slightly more XP per hour if you make the shields. However, here's why I chose the green dragon hide bodies over the shields. With the green dragon hide bodies, you can make 9 of them per inventory. However, with the shields, you can only make 6 of them. So I just thought that you guys would prefer the more AFK method than the one that earns you like slightly more XP. I mean, I hope I was right, the only reason I'm telling you this is because if you want the one that gets you more XP, then just go for the shields instead, and you can do that from level 64. But as for the green dragonite bodies, you want to make a bank preset and you want to have thread in there and then the rest of your inventory just filled with green dragon leather. Then click on the portable crafter and set it to green dragonite bodies and then just go from there. And then once you've done your whole inventory, click on the bank, load up your preset and then just rinse and repeat. If for some reason that you don't want to use a portable crafter, still make a bank preset, but then you can just go to any bank and then click on the dragon leather and then make it that way. However, just bear in mind that if you do it that way, you won't gain any of the benefits that the portable crafter gives you. Also, at this point in time, making green dragon hide bodies is around 17 GP per XP. So let's say for example if you were to get 100k XP, that would cost you 1.7 mil GP after selling the green dragon hide bodies back to the grand exchange. Now doing this is like the cheapest quick way of getting from 63 all the way up to 99. So if you want to do it all the way up to 99 and a lot of people actually opt to do this, then you're going to have to make 68,096 of them if you're not using a portable crafter or 61,906 of them if you are. And just look at that difference, it's a 6,100 difference right there. So just from that you can see how useful the portable crafter is. Now if you're okay with money and you wouldn't mind spending more to get more XP per hour, then from 84 to 99 you want to be making black dragon hide bodies. The items required in order to make one of these is thread and three black dragon leathers. You'll gain 258 XP every time you make one or 283.8 if you're making them on a portable crafter. And to get from 84 to 99 you're going to have to make 39,082 of them or 35,529 if you're using a portable crafter. Now the method to make these is exactly the same as the last one, just make sure you make a bank preset with thread and black dragon leather, and then just click on the portable crafter if you're using one and then just make them from there. Making these currently is around 27 GP per experience. So just going to use the example like before, if you were to get 100k XP, that would cost you 2.7 mil. If you compare this with the loss of the green dragon hide bodies, which is 17 GP per XP, then you can just tell that the black dragon hide bodies is 10 GP per XP more than the green dragon one. However, currently for the green dragon hide bodies, it's around 300k XP an hour, and for the black one, it's around 410k XP an hour. So if you opt to go for the black dragon hide bodies, then you're going to be getting 110k more XP per hour. So you just have to really debate with yourself, is it worth it? Do you value your time or do you value your money more? So yeah, it's really up to you. And that is it, we're done with the conventional method. I'm just going to show you a few more methods that you can use in order to get yourself up to 99. The first one is by cutting gems. At level 13, you can cut jade and this will give you 80k XP an hour. At level 20, you can do sapphires and this is 190k. At level 27, you can do emeralds and this is 250k XP an hour. 34 is rubies, 320k XP an hour. At level 43, you can do diamonds and this is 400k XP an hour. 55, you can do dragon stones and this is 530k XP an hour. And with 67 crafting, you can cut onyxes and this is 650k XP an hour. However, let's be honest, you're never going to really be training with onyxes, so you're never really going to get that 650k XP an hour mark. And the reason you're really never going to get this is because you can cut up to 4,000 uncut gems an hour. And let's be real here, who the hell has 4,000 onyxes lying around? But I mean, for the rest of them, it's pretty possible. You just have to like stock up on them so you can like continuously do them. Just make sure to make a bank preset if you do decide to do this, and then it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Also bear in mind that this method is quite expensive, I mean for the sapphires it's around 12 GP per XP, for the emeralds it's around 11, rubies are around 13, diamonds are around 19, so you should only really be doing this if you have the money to do so. 
Moving on to the next one, from 54 plus you can do battle staffs. So at level 54 you can make water battle staffs and this will give you 210k XP an hour. At level 58 you can make earth battle staffs and this will give you 240k XP an hour. At level 62 you can make fire battle staffs and this will give you 270k XP an hour. And at level 66 you can make air battle staffs and this will give you 290k XP an hour. Now this is fairly expensive to do, let's just go back to the GP per XP again. Water is around 17 GP per XP, earth is around 16, fire is around 9 and then air is around 10. Remember these prices are always like subject to change and doing this is actually cheaper than doing the green dragon hide bodies. However the only problem with this is that you need to stockpile on battle staffs and you need to do this because you can only buy like 1000 of them on the grand exchange every 4 hours and in 1 hour of training using this method you can make up to around 2100 to 2300. So if you plan on training up your crafting using this method then I just suggest stockpiling them up. You can also just ask your friends to buy them from the grand exchange for you as well and then obviously that will help you get them a lot more quickly. Next up from 76 plus you can make urns. Now yes I know there's a lot more urns than this but these are the ones that are going to make you the most XP and the ones that are going to make you the most profit. So from 76 you can make the decorated fishing urn which is 60k XP an hour and from level 81 you can make the decorated cooking urn and this will make you 65k XP an hour. So how do you make the urns? Well just get yourself a bunch of soft clay and if you do not have access to Prif then come to Varok's East Bank and then come to this room here. In this room there are two potter's wheels for you to use. What you want to do is you just want to click on the drop down box and then either go to cooking urns or fishing urns depending on which one you want to make. Then just click on the decorated versions, make them and then just wait. Once your whole inventory is done head to the pottery oven which is right next to it and then just fire them up. And then that's pretty much it, all you have to do is head back to the bank and then head back with more soft clay. Now if you do have access to Prif then you want to go to the Ithil district which is in the southwestern side and then as you can see right here all you have to do is the exact same thing except the potter's wheel and the furnace are a lot closer to the bank. Last but not least if you have 75 plus crafting and have access to Prif then you've just unlocked a free and AFK way of getting to 99 crafting. And the way that you can do this is with Harmonium Harps. This is done in the Ithil district and every time you complete a successful note you'll either gain 80 or 96 XP and this all depends on whether the voice of Saren is active in the district in which case you'll gain the 20% XP bonus. Now in order to do this just head on over to the Ithil district which is in the southwestern corner and then just head into this room here. Once you get into this room just play any of the harps that you see. And then that's pretty much that's all you have to do it's around 50k to 55k XP an hour if you're like in the higher levels of crafting. There's only one thing that you really have to look out for as you can see in my chat box It said your harp is 20% out of tune and the more that it gets out of tune the less frequent successful notes are And obviously every time you play a successful note That's when you get the XP drops So the way to put it into tune is just to click on the harp again You'll realize now that after you're hovering over the harp it says tune harp instead of play harp So just click on it it'll tune it it'll also give you some construction XP when you do it And then after that all you have to do is go back to playing it it's pretty much as simple as that, all that you have to do is make sure that you keep the percentage down. And also one last thing, you'll realise in your inventory that you'll be collecting harmonic dust. And this harmonic dust is required in order to make crystal tools. So it's good just to keep them in your bank in case you ever want to make them. But anyways guys, that is it, that is the end of the guide. I hope this guide helped you decide on how to train your crafting. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. And as always, thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and peace.